Edwards uh, run a team out of a flex team out of Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. I apologize. I'm a little shaky. I have three minties. All right, so I have a couple questions. Thank you for answering the timeline piece already. Uh, it's a tough pill to swallow, so I apologize ahead of time if this comes off. Uh, I don't want to be abrasive. All right, so let's say hypothetically you have a team in a market that is converting over 20% uh, for everybody that's flex, right? Um, understand it's, it's worth converting over 20%. And then uh, somewhere between 140 to 200% to market. Um, trying to understand that, you know, how we justify over the next six months, like cutting off all you know connections, uh, moving forward, uh, or at least over six months. Yeah. So, if you have high performing flex teams, that seems like that would be losing someone money, right? Yeah, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm happy. To, I'm happy to take it. So, it's an excellent question. And I think what it brings into play is not only how we're managing the markets, but what the markets provide us in terms of the connection volume and the opportunity that we really have. And that's really in, in a case of where we have a market where we have multiple partners that are performing way over market, and that is gonna become our limiting factor is that flex share of voice. And so as we move forward, this is what Nick is referring to, is within the flex share of voice, performance is gonna become relative. It's going to become relative to the other flex partners in your market. And so as long as you're outperforming the other flex partners in your market, you will continue to see growth on a connection basis. Nick, anything else you want to add to that? That's great.